Hi there! I'm Trunks from Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and these are the Anime Egotists. You know, in the future, podcasts are a little bit different. They're actually from pods. You know, people trying to hide from the androids and everything. I had a favorite podcast for a while, but it got cancelled. By the androids. They got killed by the androids. Don't get killed by the androids! And welcome back to the Anime Egotists, where you should not pick us in the anime fighting games. No, we're the comedic one that just kind of gets killed in the first second. No, not me. I just refuse to fight. Ah, well, I get killed in the first second. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the case. But anyways, my name's Alex, and I'm not the reason your favorite anime hasn't come back yet. Blame yourselves for that. Yeah. Or fan bases can be toxic and lead to creators not wanting to do it. That's so. Oh, I didn't mean that. I just meant like you sneeze one too many times on one day and then you're, you're the animator's just like, no, not happening. Not today. Well, okay. And I'm Richard. That is correct. And we've done videos where we talked about anime characters we'd like as friends, anime characters we wouldn't like as friends. The point is, there are a lot of characters who have good friendships with each other in anime. Exactly, and just so many interesting ways friends show support for each other. And I think that's going to be the interesting part, because we're going to discuss our best, the best friendships in anime. That's right. The friends who support each other, make fun of each other, care about each other in some aspects. Just everything all around. Sounds but let us know who some of your favorite friendships in the anime are, and I'm sure at some point we'll probably be doing the reverse of this, like the worst friendships, because there are a lot out there too. Yeah, I, I need a little more time on that list, just because it's an interesting one. Yeah, but anyways, you want to start us off? I can. Um, so my first one, I picked uh, Choji and Shikamaru from Naruto. They have been friends since they were, I guess, kind of first entering the academy as, like, five-year-olds. Their um, clans are really close. And they do br seem to bring out the best in each other. They have gotten along better than everybody. Uh, Shikamaru was good friends with Choji, despite Choji getting made fun of for being chubby or fat as a kid. Uh, I feel like Choji... It, Shikamaru is like the only person Choji would share food with on a regular basis. And especially because Shikamaru's got that mindset, when it comes to their teamwork, they're probably two of the ones that work the best together out of probably most of the Konoha uh, uh, 13 or whatever, however many there are now. Yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> especially when you go back and you watch when Shikamaru became a Chunin, and Choji was saying, well, you were the only one to become a Chunin. You're better than you think you are. At, right after Eno tells Choji, hey, you need to lose weight or girls won't like you. And Shikamaru just says, don't change who you are. Stay the person you are. That's what people find attractive. And ultimately, he ends up being right because Shikamaru is mm -hmm. a genius, I guess. Yeah, and just the fact that I mean, Shikamaru, you even see it with Naruto and Shikamaru, that he didn't treat Naruto like the others did he um it just shikamaru being such a good friend with choji and accepting him for who he is and uh choji understanding that despite what shikamaru says with uh everything being a drag he knows that shikamaru really actually cares about uh a lot of things and wants to make a difference so it, i think these two bring out the best in each other yeah not to mention how heartbroken shikamaru was when he thought choji died in the sasuke retrieval arc you mm -hmm. saw the look on his face when he saw oh uh, when he started to put it together he was not okay a hey, but then when he learns everything's all right it's it's still hard on him but it works out for the best i love their friendship exactly and again him and uh you know having to talk uh Choji into fighting uh, the resurrected Asuma at the end in that battle is uh, another kind of heartbreaking moment, but he knows that, uh, Shikamaru knows that they need Choji to be able to uh, pretty much in their eyes save Asuma from himself. Sure, yeah, yeah. but I, I, I can agree. I, I Their friendship was one of my favorites. Yeah. So your first one? Okay. Gray, Gordon, and Ghosh from Black Clover. Okay. Yeah, 
so basically the three weirdos, the three people who you probably would want to hang out with before you got to know them. And Grey being kind of scary looking, but then you realize she's just like a 20-something year old girl who's super shy. Ghost, who's pretty much obsessed with his little sister and is kind of creepy about it. And Gordon, who looks completely terrifying, but is like the nicest person on the planet. Honestly, I just love the scenes where all these three kind of get stuck working together. But then ultimately it's proven, oh man, we actually work really well together. Like when the Eye of the Midnight Sun was coming after the hideout, the three of them and admittedly Henry all found ways to combine their spells and work strategies together. It's just that they don't always work in the sense of they all, Ghost calls them out for being weird. Like, hey, why don't you, Gordon, you can't make weird faces at people. Great, you have to speak up. And I'm like, wait, the sister, the sister lover is the most normal person in this room. That's kind of terrifying. I can see it. I think I've seen that scene with uh, Henry and because uh, don't they turn the um, hideout into a giant kind of mech at that that's, point? That's yeah. correct. Okay, yes. So it, it, that is a really good scene to see. Kind of the people that have been there in the background mostly at the, up until this point get the chance to stand out. So I, I can agree. I like that they all got to have a big moment right here. Yeah, not to mention, and Gordon calls them the G trio or something like that, or something ridiculous like that. At the same time, though, you see like Gray and she will hide behind them. So it's kind of, it kind of feels like she hides behind them the most. Like, hey, I trust these two the most to keep me safe, but I'll still do what I can. The only reason it's so low is because they're doing stuff with Ghosh and Gray, and I'm not a fan of it, but that's not a point for here. But ultimately, I love this trio. I love their dynamic. I can see it. I, I and I do remember from those first scenes that they're always in the hideout together and uh when especially when Asta first arrives and he has to go out on missions uh with kind of everybody else it seems like. So I can see it. Yeah, basically. All right. So my next one? Go for it. So this one is interesting because they've had their issues, but they've got um they get along so well and have such similar personalities when it comes to like what they like to do. And that's Luffy and Usopp from One Piece. Yep. They, besides their big fight between, um, during the uh, Water 7 arc with uh, the Going Mary having reached the end of its uh, time being able to carry the crew, they get along uh, swimmingly. Usopp steps up and knows that I know that's more for Robin, but he steps up and becomes uh, Sniper King to save Robin uh, just because he feels like he can't stand, um, show his face to Luffy at that point. Uh, but then just the fact that they always seem to get along and whenever there's a new th like little thing, especially in the earlier seasons, like a bug or something that really interests uh, one, the other is always there. I just love this personality that they just get along so well with all their little... Uh, shared interests yeah especially since look for all we clown him Usopp can be very smart when he needs to be at the same time though if you put these two morons together nothing's not a whole lot's going to get accomplished I can't imagine wanting to be in a room with the two of them for too long at the same time though they immensely care about each other to the point where to the point where people I'm not gonna say their friendship is underplayed but there are people who kind of forget just how close they are because they're focusing on other dynamics of One Piece, which are great, but at the same time, I do still feel like Usopp and Luffy kind of don't get as much love as they could. Yeah, they. Uh, this is a very interesting friendship, because I know um, a lot of people really like the friendship um, Zoro shows Luffy, because he always seems to be sacrificing himself for Luffy in some way, but I like this one just because it's more of not a dedication to each other, but a, we have similar interests. We both want to uh, reach our goals and they work together well in the end. I think that's what really gets me for this friendship. Yeah, especially when, like we said, Usopp takes out Blackbeard and helps <laughs> Luffy become the Pirate King. Yeah, well, now I'm hearing that Buggy's going to be the Pirate King. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> he, you did nothing for most of the series, but here you go. I, I could see that being the ending. I did not. So, what are you going to do now as king? Honestly, I didn't think I'd make it this far. 
somehow that somehow that checks out. Exactly. All right, your next one. Uh, Kazuki and Ray from Buddy Daddies. One hundred percent agree. They're called Buddy Daddies. They're friend. Like I feel like I shouldn't have to say more, but this is a podcast, so I kind of have to. Ultimately, I just love how they kind of find ways of making their lives better after they've been through so much. Before he met Kazuki, Ray was even more of a shut-in somehow than before. For his place was cluttered, he couldn't he had cut his hair, and according to Kazuki, he couldn't even make a noodles for himself. Like he couldn't pour hot water into a little thing and bo- and get the noodles ready, because I guess Ray didn't know how to read beforehand. But I don't know, they both find ways of kind of motivating each other kazuki through his actions and ray through his words and when they end up adopting miri they they get closer in a weird way but they also both kind of realize that look look they've said before they're not necessarily fit for being parents and that's true but they're not exactly fit for being people who raise kids together like it, i like you understand what i mean like they don't completely work together in some cases yeah, the whole thing with like uh, Kazuki actually reaching burnout because he's doing all the work and uh, Ray's doing all the play. I can I can see it in there. I do like though that um, by the end of this at that uh, the end of the series with the little flash forward, we get. Um, oh, you're that... spoiling that. Cool. <laughs> I was just gonna say that uh, uh, Ray's at least gotten to the point where he can make toast, and it's his signature dish. It's the only thing he makes. <laughs> But yeah, yeah ultimately, it, it, kind of, it especially makes it funny because Ray's like, oh, Kazuki's such a freeloader in my place. I'm like, he's cooking and cleaning and doing everything. Like, come on, man, come on, give him some credit. But ultimately, they do basically call each other their partner or their best friend. They're very open about that, especially towards the end of the series. He's mm-hmm. honestly, look, their friendship isn't perfect, and I don't know too many people who have a perfect friendship, but Kazuki and Ray. They're buddies who are also daddies in more ways than one for some people. Yeah, as I said, one hundred percent co-side. They have the fact that that show is so much about found family and stuff uh, because of all the stuff that happens in it. I one hundred percent agree with this. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So my next one. Go for it. So, I picked. Uh, Lucy and Urza from Fairy Tale. So I I debated putting I didn't really want to put any of the ones that might end up as couples or something. Like I thought Lucy and Natsu might be good, but there's debate on whether their current manga is gonna get put them together at the end or not. I picked Lucy and Urza because Urza treats Lucy as a really strong wizard from the start, even though she's not there. Um, she I I feel like Urza sees the potential in Lucy to become one of the strongest uh wizards in the world, like she like they do throughout that series. So I just kind of feel like that's something nice that you can kind of have that mentorship of friendship as well. They go out to tea shops uh, together throughout the series in the background, have slumber parties and stuff. It it's really just a nice friendship I feel that they have overall. Yeah, even based on the little I've seen, I see a lot of scenes of them just interacting, whether it's something major or something minor. M- more often than not, it's something fan service related, but I'm like, hey, at least they're together. That's what counts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just, this was a good friendship. There's not that arguing, fighting mentality. Um, sometimes they can help each other through, uh, get outside of their normal comfort zone. I think. Lucy helps Urza be a bit more girly, and Urza helps Lucy become a stronger fighter. So that's also a nice dynamic I feel that they have, that uh, they help each other grow, especially in the ways that they uh, want to, but don't feel that they can normally. Yeah. Like I said, I've seen very little, but the moments I've seen of them do seem like they genuinely do care about each other. And it's it's nice to see, based on, like I said, the very little I know. Yeah. All right. So your next one. All right. Axel Brody and Jim Crocodile Cook from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Okay. Honestly, I love how these two didn't even necessarily become friends in the most dramatic way. 
it's just Axel's kind of a loner, and Jim basically is like the friend, the nicest guy on the planet. Yeah. But but they both kind of get stuck with each other in some way during season three, even before stuff starts falling apart. Like Jim's always trying to get Axel to open up a bit more, and compared to everybody else, Axel's not necessarily pushing Jim away. Hey, he just does, you can tell he kind of just doesn't know at first. It especially kind of seems cool because in the video games you see them interacting together and they're both basically it's not necessarily we don't necessarily know if axel's opened up more at this point or if he's just like eh, whatever he's not doing any harm but when axel starts to realize when spoiler alert in, for season three when jim ends up dying in axel gets scared about it because he doesn't know if he can defeat the supreme king Thing. And he breaks down to somebody says, I couldn't even save my best friend, which considering how he was in the beginning is huge. He actually admits that he saw Jim as his best friend. And, and ultimately, when Axel ends up saving the day and getting his confidence back, back you, can just te- you can just tell that Jim had a huge part of it. And just the fact that in Duel Links, when they finally brought Jim into the fold and he was going through his problems, Axel was there for him. Axel was the first person to help him. Yeah, it sounds like a good friendship. Again, I do need to go and finish this series. I, I know I keep saying it, but I keep finding other little animes or just not having time to watch. But from what yeah. I've seen on like YouTube clips, they do seem like an interesting pairing. Yeah, uh, if they're, if they're, as much I would have liked to have seen more from them, just because because like G, GX got really weird towards the end. But ultimately, I love their friendship. I love ha- I. And I, I know some people might think, well, Jim didn't really develop that much, so what's he getting from Axel? It's just like, well, that doesn't always matter. Sometimes it's just they're both good friends, they care about each other, and that's it. They 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 support each other, and I think that's cool. As I said, I'll completely sign on to this. I, I I'll I need to go watch the series to find out just how good this friendship actually is. Eventually. <laughs> Yeah, I, I will. I I will. I've I've watched a few things that you've recommended recently, so Yeah, yeah, but you've been yeah, but you've been saying this about GX since I think even before we started this podcast. Yeah, probably. I just I know it's on Crunchyroll, so I think I can watch it there. All right. So my next one. Okay. So I picked uh Senku and uh Taiju from Dr. Stone. So, Senku is the main character, the genius who knows all pretty much about everything that you need to. And Taiju was his best friend from the uh, modern day world and is actually the first one that Senku goes to wake up to help him survive in the modern or in the stone world. Um, They have such an interesting dynamic because Senku is so smart and uh, Taiju is more of the bronze but he's got such a caring personality and they got along so well taiju gets excited about all the science despite the fact that he doesn't understand he's got um they trust each other to the point where um taiju stays behind to be a spy for senku while he's kind of going to see um figure out how to defeat um the bad guy from the first seasons um, it's just an interesting dynamic. They, there's so much trust. Um, the things that Taiju does learn, he remembers stuff like fertilizer that allows him to help grow wheat and stuff um, when everybody else is kind of failing at it uh, while Senku's away. So it's just kind of this interesting dynamic where they they help kind of bring out the best and support each other, especially in the uh, Stone Age they they're kind of living in at this point. Now, are they already friends when the series starts, or does it build up to it? No, they, uh, they're they friends. They, um, In fact, like Senku had just told Taiju to go uh, talk to the girl that he likes, and they were, uh, when the you see the uh, green thing that turns everybody to stone. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic that they're, they've been friends for so long, and again, Taiju's the first one Senku goes to find and brings him uh to the point where he can be resurrected as well okay yeah i don't know th- i don't know this show i think i'm getting closer to the point where i might want to give it a chance but overall like it does sound like they care about each other and I, it, it does sound like a good friendship 
Yeah, it's just again another one where they bring out kind of the best in each other and the the level of trust to, despite the fact that they're not together all the time, they trust the other to do their part to help humanity recover from uh, the disaster of having most of the population turned to stone. Hence the name. Yep. Yeah, but I can definitely co-sign. Yep. So what is your next one? All right. Tadakuni, Yoshitake, and Hidenori from Daily Lives of High School Boys. Okay. Honestly, these three just feel like your friends from high school. They really just feel... Because <laughs> there's not a whole lot of deep moments. Like, you don't get a whole lot of deep moments between the three. You're like, oh, man, if I don't get through this test, or, oh, my dad's at this home. So, no, it's just something basically like, oh, I found a stick in the street, so let's start acting like we're fighting monsters. Or, hey, hey, guys, look at this manga I'm writing. I don't really get this. And then he knees, and then Hidenori knees Yoshitake in the face. He's like, you could never understand my manga. What do you know? Honestly, it just feels like the perfect amount of just boys doing stupid stuff and boys ripping on each other. That, in a sense, it kind of works. First, especially since you can kind of feel like they're trying to break each other at one point. Because in the first episode, you, you, we, we know the cliche. Hidenori runs off with a piece of toast in his mouth. With a piece of toast in his mouth. Now, oh, and when Yoshitake is following him, like, hey, man, and let's get to school. You can see he's eating curry. Because it was left over from last night. And then Hidenori's like, God, that's so stupid. It breads the regular cliche. That's what you should be eating. And he's drink and he's eating ramen out of the bowl. You have to admit, we've had moments like that where it's like, let's just up the ridiculousness. Let's see who breaks <laughs> first in this sort of thing. Yeah, I think it was usually what me or you, if, especially if we had the whole group involved. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but in all honesty, they do care about and support each other to the point where. It kind of doesn't, it works in the show's favor, but it also kind of doesn't, because when all the boys are together, that's when the show's at its best. But when they're split up, you kind of start to think, huh, wonder what the others are doing at this point. But it also just kind of shows you're going to get busy a lot. You don't always have time for your friends. Exactly. I, I can co-sign. I, from what I've seen of this show, I can see that they are good friends, and even though they're not always together, they do... Uh, always seem to try to come together to support each other. So that, I can see it. It's a good, very good friendship. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, but also just the other ridiculousness of when all three of them come together, they lose about 90% of their brain cells. <laughs> so they each have normal brain cells normally, but when they're all together, they're down to sharing one. Yeah. Well, some of them even have, are, have really, really good grades. But when you put more than one together, it turns into a nightmare. Okay. I have a feeling that would have been us had we had more classes together. No, no, I we we <laughs> sat in that astronomy class. I think our brain cells. I think I don't think our brain cells got worse because of us. I think it just got worse because of all the questions people were asking. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> yeah, but Hidenori, Yoshitake, and Tadakuni, just friends that I feel like everybody's had at one point. Yeah, I have one that might kind of be similar, and I I am interested to see what you think of this friendship as well. Okay, but should we move? But you co-sign, and we should we move to honorable mentions? Yep. So I'll start with that one that I was going to uh, bring up. Hideki Motosuba and uh, Hiromo Shinoba from uh, Chobits. What are those names? <laughs> Did you... Are... Motosuba and Sh uh, Shinbo. Okay, That's... yes, from Chobits. <laughs> Yeah. Upon, look, I rewatched Chobits right around the time that you watched it for the first time. Mm -hmm. My, let's let's just get into this. Let's just go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, there, I just like how much that uh, Motosuba cares for Shinbo and the fact that when he goes missing and leaves him with um, his uh, Persicom and all that. Sumomo. Sumomo, yeah. Uh, that he really is worried about them and then the teacher going missing as well, but he, and the fact, that's just a weird story I've, in and of itself, but I feel like uh, Motosuba's caring for him is just, is really nice, and the fact that Shinbo, he does make fun of him a, a good bit, 
but he does support him, helps him uh, learn all about the Persicoms and how they actually work when uh, Motosuba doesn't really understand all that kind of technology having grown up in the farm country, I guess, is kind of, that's only in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, look, I do, I do agree. They do find ways of supporting and caring about each other. There were times when Shinbo would, would say some stuff about Hideki that I'd be like, T like dude, I, I don't know. Oh, upon my rewatch, I kind of realized maybe I don't like Shinbo as much as I used to, but I, I, he's still, I, I, I wouldn't say I hate him. He's still a good friend at times. I, I don't know. I don't know. There's something about Shinbo that makes me just gl just look at him like, I don't completely trust this guy. I can understand that. I just, I feel like that there's just that connection that they have to, um, that, and the fact that um, Motosuba is able to kind of recover from kind of almost feeling of betrayal of not getting to know what was going on in Shinbo's life for, at one point is nice to know that he gets to say that I wish you had told me, but I'm here for you still. So I, I like that part of it. That, now, now you're starting to see why I said Hideki <laughs> would make an awesome friend to have. Exactly. Yeah, but I, I can definitely co-sign. Uh, there aren't a lot of other ro friendships you could have picked from Chobits because they're kind of all over the place, but I do co-sign. <laughs> I like them. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it. Or, yeah, as I said, I like this friendship. Uh, I do agree. The others are kind of weird because of who likes who. Uh, yeah, it's, it's weird when you get farther and farther into that show. I like their friendship with the genius Minoru. I like that. I do too. I just... He's so he talks so monotone that I just couldn't, I don't know if I could put him as like, he's such a close friend with everybody else. Uh, I, I agree <laughs> to disagree, but okay. All right. So your next one. All right. My first honorable mention, Kanzuki, Natsume, and Shuroyama from Beelzebub. Okay. Honestly, this is kind of, this is kind of the first gang of delinquents to actually sort of start to care about each other. Because when Shiroyama gets taken out by Oga, uh, Kanzuki's like, oh, well, he was weak, so why do I care anyway? But after some time passes and they kind of become good guys, there's a point towards the... They get to the point where they want to train with Kanzuki. It's like, hey, let's help you train so we can take over the school again. And they, it doesn't work, not really, but it does show that the effort's there and they do care about each other. Especially since Shiroyama ends up getting hurt by delinquents at another school, and the first, and like I said, Kanzuki just brushed it off the first time, like whatever. Or he's weak; it doesn't matter. But that once it happens, after he's grown, he straight up threatens to kill the other students for hurting his friend. It's just awesome to see. Look, it, it's not look. It's not the nicest <laughs> thing to say to somebody, but it does show just how much he's grown to care about his subordinates. And with Natsume, everyone's like, dude, wait, you're stronger than almost everybody at the school. Why are you following Kanzuki? And he's just like, oh, no, I just follow Kanzuki because he's active and it's fun. Just sort of showing how it's like, I could rule, but I have my friends with me. So I'm, I'm happy as is. Yeah, I, from what I remember of uh, seeing, watching the show and you were watching it, it's, they, they definitely have an interesting dynamic. And with that whole, I am stronger, but I don't want to lead. I, I like this guy. I wanted him to be as strong as he can, and I'm going to support him. I like that idea. In friendship. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's they do treat, they do prank and trick and and mess with each other, but never to the point where you're like, oh, these guys should never be friends. Like I'd like to think out of everything Shiroyama's been through, Kanzuki found a way of saying, hey, I've been horrible to you in the past, and you still suck by me. Thanks for that. Yeah, as I said, I'll co-sign. I think this is an interesting friendship. It's interesting because it's also got the um, oh god, the delinquent dynamic with them all still being delinquents, but yet still caring uh, for each other. You know, everybody says, "Oh, we need the time skip where everybody graduates." I'm like, these morons aren't graduating. Have you seen their grades? I don't know. They they get past just so that the school can start making repairs. <laughs> The ja there's a janitor. I don't know if he's the janitor or the principal, but it's just some dude with Luffy's hat from One Piece. So I'm just like, oh, so after becoming Pirate King, Luffy retired and took over a delinquent school. Actually, I can kind of see it. He probably is actually the strongest person in that building then. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. All right, but as I said, I'll co-sign. I think that's an interesting friendship. 
All righty. So my next one I picked was um, Ichiko and Chad from Bleach. Um, the fact that they stand up for each other, like when you learn their background of how they actually met when uh, Chad's getting beat up, tied to a chair, and Ichigo shows up to uh, fight off the delinquents and calls 911 for an ambulance for all the other people. Call 911, call an ambulance, but not for the, but not for him. Yeah, and they just keep having this really nice friendship of, they always go out and support each other. What Like, Chad doesn't care for Rukia, especially at that first part that much, but he knows that Ichigo does. And so he steps up and goes to the Soul Society. Um, I know when he gets, right before he gets his powers, Ichigo uh, knows that he really cares for the little bird that he's taking care of. It's just all these different little things that they do for each other throughout the series. The fact that, uh, now, it's kind of confusing because Chad might have been um, mind controlled to help uh, to convince Ichigo to join the Fullbringers to get his powers back, but or it could be that he really, but I feel that it was him really wanting to help Ichigo get his powers back. He knows that Ichigo can't stand the fact that he's pretty much unable to help them fight hollows or other bad guys with spiritual power anymore at that at that point in the series so it's i have a feeling it's more of chad he found a group that could help each go get powers back and be able to help fight again and i think that's really nice yeah ultimately i'm gonna be honest out of what from what i know about bleach these ichigo and chad don't really get talked about that much when they interact with them i'm like huh okay because it's usually Ichigo and Rukia, or Ichigo and Renji, or Orihime, or the karate girl who beats him up. It's it's usually them. Yeah, I, I feel like theirs is a really good friendship that isn't talked about nearly enough, because they always go out and support each other whenever they have a mission. They're always, I mean, every single one of the big stories, even though Chad kind of reached, I think, his potential in the... Um, on car arc he still shows up and goes out and fights trying to save the day and i so he knows how much his friendship means to ichigo and i think that's a really nice thing yeah i can i can agree, i can definitely agree with that i can co-sign on to that all right so your next honorable mention all right you had a naruto one so i'll have a naruto one but i i want it's gonna sound weird but i want you to hear me out for this okay Itachi and Kisame. Okay. Honestly, look, I know these two are bad guys, but at the same time, you could tell that in a sense they did respect and respect and rely on each other. Their chemistry was really good. Their fights were great. Hey, but also, I just love the quiet moments, like when they first meet, when Kisame basically threatens to kill Itachi, and Itachi's basically sits there and is like, "Okay, fine, go for it." Just know that a person doesn't know who they really are until moments before their death. And that kind of sits with Kisame. Hey, like, it, like we talk about Itachi being loyal to the Leaf Village for everything, but Kisame was loyal to the Akatsuki. Like, he, did, like he basically let himself get killed so the information wouldn't get out to the Leaf Village. They're both loyal to different sides of the war, but they're both loyal to each other at the same time. Yeah, I... I, I can see it. Um, I would I would have found it. I, I kind of wish that they had been like truly loyal to each other one hundred percent. That could have been really an interesting dynamic of Kisame turning on the Akatsuki because he views that his friendship with Itachi was more important or something along those lines. True, but, but then Itachi ended up dying, so it, I don't know how effective. <laughs> I I know what you mean. I agree to an extent, but I don't know how well it would have done regardless. Yeah, but I would be interested to know if how much Kisame knew if like Itachi was actually sick and all that. I don't know. I don't know if he knew Itachi was sick, but I do. I feel like it's been hinted at that he knew that Itachi wasn't completely a bad guy. Like he might have been one of the good guys, but but Kisame kind of kept that info to himself because he's like because they both grew to care about each other so much. <laughs> I don't know. Look, look. They didn't have they didn't have the funniest moments together or anything. And you could argue that neither of them were really good people. But at the same time, like I love their friendship. I love their interactions together. Yeah, as I said, I'll I'll co-sign. It's an 
interesting friendship that they have because I, I do think that they both knew stuff about the others that they didn't let the rest of the Akatsuki know for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't say Hidan and Kakuzu because they, they um, no, they would not be doing the same for each other. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, yeah, uh, they would try to kill they i think they tried to kill each other on multiple occasions so. well that is a friendship in a nutshell so who do what so what do i know yeah i could see them being good friends as um having their own uh version of jackass in the naruto universe i would watch that i would actually watch that hi this is my name's hidon and this is jackass because <laughs> hill gets dismembered and you just watch kakuzu walk out and start sewing it back together <laughs> He, he's not he's not even screaming about it. he's just like i'm used to it at this i'm used to this moron at this point and it's an easy uh, way, well it's an easy way to make money because they're filming it and selling it uh, yeah yeah <laughs> we're not doing a collaboration with them that would be terrifying <laughs> yeah they, they'd probably end up killing us eh. or we would end up becoming like partner business partners with them for the long term works for me but like i said Kisame and Natachi, not necessarily the group of uh, friendship you think about, but I still found it really intriguing. And, and I'd like to think if they both went to the same place, which I doubt, I'd like to think they're still hanging out. Yeah, that would be interesting. They, they meet up in purgatory every other, every few years. Works for me. <laughs> All right. So my next one. Go for it. So I picked um, Lelouch and... Uh, Suzaku from Code Geass. They were uh, kind of raised as together, um, uh, but then when they reach that point where they're becoming adults and trying to figure out what they're doing, they end up on the opposite sides of the war where uh, Suzaku is the knight for, um, I think it's one of uh, Lulish's sisters. They, um, they're fighting, but whenever they're together and not disguised as zero and uh being the knight they really do seem to care about each other uh throughout and then the fact that at the end of that series the spoiler alert five three two i know it's an older series but this is the big ending hey, man you spoiled buddy that ease which came, which just finished like a month ago you shouldn't have any reservations <laughs> about spoiling code geos all I said was that there was a time skip. I didn't say what happened in the time skip besides that's that Ray makes th toast. That's a, that's a sport. Fuck it. Fine. <laughs> so, but in this one, it's literally the end of the series. Well, kind of. The fact that uh, Lelouch trusts uh, Suzaku to pretty much be the one to end the Reign of Terror and kill him. I don't know if that's necessarily the best part of the friendship. It's just kind of an honorable mention because they trust each other once they both know each other's uh, roles in this uh, to the point where Lelouch trusts him to kill him and all that at the end of the series. So, yeah, I it, I can definitely see that, and you know, it kind of remind it kind of I'd say it still considers them as friendship because it's the last request. Yes, and you're fulfilling a request for your friend. What what would the alternative be? It'd be like, oh, well, you didn't kill me, so we're not friends anymore. I I, I don't know, but I, I understand what you mean. But at the same time, I still think that I still think they're friends in a way. Yeah, and, and you can see it on um, uh, Suzaku's face because you get that scene where it's inside the mask, and you just see him crying because he knows that uh, this had to get be done his to, in order to fulfill the plans to make a better world in the end. Yeah, definitely, but. As sad as an ending as it was, it it helped that they were friends, so I can co-sign. Uh, so your next one? All right. Guts and Griffin. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right. Full, all right. I'm going to have to try not to go into song and dance for this for this friendship. Conchome and Fulgore from Zatch Bell. I, yeah. Honestly... It, if, if the simplest way is that they're both goofballs, but they both find ways of bringing out the strength and confidence in each other. You could argue some of it's overconfidence, and that's not necessarily a good thing, but they get stronger from working off each other. And they're, it, normally I like friendships where one person's the fired up friend and the other person's kind of more serious, but they're both kind of the same person, just the right amount, and it kind of works. 
they're not the strongest, which which Ke- which Zach and Keo point out when they're fighting, because Zach says, oh man, we should take these guys seriously. This could be tough. And Keo's like, are you sure? They look really weak to me. And then they end up winning. And Zach's like, man, that was a tough fight. And Keo's like, no, it was really, really easy. But it also kind of plays into their story later. They get stronger at an incredibly slow pace and can't keep up with people. Oh, and it just kind of shows that their trickery or more comedic antics with their spells actually find a way of getting stronger and bringing, making them better people. If I remember correctly, isn't there one spell is just to uh, change him into a cannon and it doesn't actually fire anything? That's literally their only... That, for the oh. longest time, that's really one of their only spells. So yeah, I I can agree. They and the fact that they they get along so well, and I I don't really remember them getting very many more spells. But I, so I would hope that maybe if we get a more of them in Z, uh the new series that they are they. Let me put it to you this way: they are in the new manga, and honestly, I don't even really know how to describe what ha- what's going on. Well, I'm assuming Fulgori is the world's greatest musician at this point. Honestly, that uh, it gets it gets weird. I'm just saying, uh, not the, the series itself is the, about what you expect, but the consomme for Fulgori stuff just it gets bizarre because it gets bizarre. But I I I had to look it up because their backstory is actually really interesting too. Because when Fulgori was young, he wanted to be this badass tough guy and he fought everybody to the point where he was kicked out of his hometown and his parents basically threatened him at gunpoint to leave but then after like doing some soul searching he realized that that maybe it's better to be kind to people and find ways of being strong not necessarily through brute force but but just finding ways of being strong but still being friendly to other people and that's kind of what inspires him and what the, it's it's a spoiler, and I know the anime didn't fully get to this, but but the, before they in one of their fights, one of their spells is that Kanjume will transform from him into like a really savage monster. But the problem is he gets stronger, but he doesn't have control over himself. Oh, but Fulgori finds a way of bringing him back before sadly their book ends up getting burnt. But they end up also saving the day in that regard. It just shows that they stay true to themselves and decide we don't have to be strong like everybody else. We can be strong in our own way. And to me, that it's awesome. I love their friendship. How it always reinforces that. Yeah, I, I'll one hundred percent sign on to this. I, I wish that the anime had continued so that we could have gotten uh, this, their ending and all that. But I think that it's what we get is really nice in the series. Yeah, yeah. Just, just don't sing around them because then you you will get addicted. <laughs> yes, yes, you will. Those songs. I need to. I need to look into getting them. <laughs> Only the English versions. The Japanese versions are perverted and weird. But Contra yeah. Man Fulgore. But yeah, we also grew up with the uh, English dub of this series, so I I kind of view that as the original in my mind because that's the one I saw. Whatever. <laughs> All right. My next one? This would be your last honorable mention, correct? Uh, I thought we did four, right? Or did I miscount on this? Do you only have two uh, two left? I, 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 Kansaki Natsume and Shuriyama, Itachi and Kisame, Kanchame and Fulgore. That's the three, three honorable mentions. Okay, so I have one more honorable mention, and then you have one more honorable mention, right? Yes. Okay, so... Um, so I... Picked uh, Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenitsu from uh, Demon Slayer. They kind of end up inspiring each other after kind of a major defeat that they have. Uh, they end up facing, I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's the Lower Moon Six, which is like, there's the 12 strongest demons under the Demon King kind of thing. Um, the Michael Jackson looking guy. That's the best way to describe everybody. Yeah. To- yeah, I even I know who you mean. Yeah. Um Inosuke and uh Zenisu end up really thinking that it, it, it might be time for them to just retire and not uh be demon slayers, even though they've only been at it for like a few weeks or months at this point. 
and Tanjiro kind of helps inspire them to that yes we were defeated but we can grow stronger and go out and uh, continue the fight um they seem to actually get along despite the fact that uh like Inosuke's very overly aggressive towards the others but then uh he views them as his underlings yet when they actually are in trouble he views them very much as like the perfect teammates for him uh Zenitsu gets seems to get braver when he's with them um which is nice to see I don't know if they're uh if Inosuke and Zenitsu are going to be much in this new arc that's uh currently premiering so because I've heard it. nope so but I know that they play a bigger role uh still in the uh ending story so I'm interested to see where they go and I know that their families remain friends and stuff as the series continues. I don't think I'm going to like Zenitsu when I start Demon Slayer. He's not the worst one. He um, That's not a selling he, point. He he has his moments of where he is a really good character, I feel. So I, I'm hoping that I get we see more of that side of him. So I don't know whether to trust you. You like Mineta. It's kind of hard to trust your <laughs> scope of characters, but Maybe this time you'll be right. I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know a lot about them, but they do seem like they all work well together. I can I can co-sign. All right. And your final honorable mention? The Kesoku Band from Bochi the Rock. I don't remember this anime. Oh, oh, God. oh God. The comments are going to be lighting you up. Ho- <laughs> hopefully not, but... the the. Here's they're an honorable mention because I haven't been like I'm still I'm about halfway through the series and I'm enjoying it for the most part. But the thing is, I just like how they all kind of find ways of working together of working together throughout this bit ba- throughout like trying to be a better band. They all kind of share stories like, hey, I went through the one of the character one of the characters, Rio, shares a story about how she used to be in a band who just wanted to get big to get money so she quit and she decides to stay with them with the current band who wants to like actually perform good music and like do what they love and that sort of thing and they're all very they're all very patient with bochi who's like incredibly has a lot of anxiety he it's just it's just a nice friendship it's an honorable mention because it's gonna sound like a weird complaint, but it seems like a lot of episodes focus on them being a band and doing this, them being a band and doing that to help the band. Ultimately, I guess I just, I, I guess to me, and like I said, I haven't finished the series yet, so I don't know. But I guess I would just like more episodes where it's just like, hey, like let's just go, let's just go to an arcade or something. Let's just let's be friends, but let's n- let's not just be a band. Let's be friends. Let's because that can help reinforce what makes them work so well together but it's just, but the, it's it's a nitpick at this point so the kasoku man cuz they're pretty cool i can understand that i looked up the picture and i know i've seen images from this show but i i've never uh seen it but i can understand based on your description of how they each have their own little problems or deal with stuff but they still come together seems like a it's a really good friendship yeah yeah the show itself is it's good, but I don't think I love it as much as everyone else does. Okay. I, as I said, I'll, I'll co-sign. I, I don't know if I'll actually give this one a shot or not, but I've got plenty of other stuff I've got to catch up first. All righty. So, all right. So, ready for my last one? Sure thing. Chad slash Eugene and Proto Man from uh, Me- uh, Mega Man Battle Network or uh, Mega Man Anti Warrior. So at first they're just they, they're kind of portrayed as just being uh net battler and net navy but when you get to the I guess kind of second season access and you get the dark proto man arc where uh Chad is forced to uh, use the dark chip on proto man and uh he ends up losing him you feel his pain of losing pretty much what he views as his best friend and his partner um throughout the season you get different um battles where some people v- very much view that we have to delete proto man he's too strong of a navi to uh risk being uh, out on the nap on the net as a dark 
think that's a dark void is what they're called. Um, but Chad, all he wants to do is save Proto Man, and you get that really nice ending where they have where uh they use the uh I forgot what they call it the dimension generator so that they can bring the uh the net into the real world to just give them a chance to actually fight and save him. They uh fight and you get that whole part where you see that with him uh Chad coming from a rich family, Proto Man was really the only one that was there for him as a kid. They fight uh fight and uh use the cross fusion to just free uh Proto Man from it and bring him back. You really in my opinion this is one of a really great friendship. They fight for each other beforehand and then and go way out of the way despite everybody else saying it's too uh too much for to save him. Yeah, I can definitely agree. The it really just I I, I don't know. Oh, oh, that is something that people that shows are always able to get me with. It with the hey, everybody else has given up on saving this person, but I can still do it. It reminds me of that really bad Naruto episode where Akamaru got bitten and he was transforming, and they're like, "Oh well, we might have to get rid of Akamaru." And he was like, "No, no, we're not doing that." And they did a good job with this too. I just. I don't know. Oh, I'm not gonna. I don't know how I feel about this because I do like it. Do really enjoy their friendship. I guess part of me is just like more, but we already got this great art. More. I feel like if because I know that they're they still play a big part. I think in the Beast War and maybe I think it's Beast Plus that comes out in Japan only. So I wish that they would release, but I don't think I'll ever get that. If you start compl- if you s- complain about it enough, I'm sure it's going to happen. Well, we've already done that with Zatch Bell, and I don't. We got a new series, so yeah. And apparently, they're releasing episodes of the anime on YouTube. I think it's just the dub, but I honestly haven't gone back. I'm still, I'm still going through my Star Force kick. Hey, as I said, just five more years, and you'll get yours. Goody. <laughs> All right, but yeah, uh, Chad and Proto Man, I really enjoyed their overall story. And I can co-sign on to that. All right, so your final one? Yeah, it's a Pokemon one, but it's one that even I feel like is massively underrated. Ash and Brock. Okay, yeah, they were one of my backups, actually. Yeah, look, look uh, I, I, I thought about saying Ash, and, Ash, Missy, and Brock, and honestly, that probably should be here. But nobody talks about Ash and Brock specifically. Think about think about it. out of all the fights Ash has had with Missy over something stupid. Ash and Missy, Ash and May, Dawn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How many fights do you recall him and Brock having? The only thing I can kind of think of is I seem to remember Ash and Brock Brock getting kind of annoyed at Ash for saying something, but uh, he's not really angry. It's more of disappointed in how Ash said something. Yeah, exactly. Ultimately, these two are kind of always there for each other. And look, I love Ash and Go. I love their friendship so much. But Ash and Brock just really do feel, does feel like an older brother, younger brother sort of thing, how they're always mm-hmm. looking out for each other. Heck, with as much as Missy pulls on Brock's ear or doesn't find a way of completely helping him get over a girl, Ash at least tries and he's like, hey, mm-hmm. don't worry, Brock. At least You'll find other girls to reject you. It's not the nicest, but he, his heart's in the right place. Exactly. And that's kind of the perfect dynamic, because that would be something a really good friend or uh, brother would say to try to get you to over get over a girl if you had a crush on and she rejected you. Yeah. And they're just, they, they just are stuck with each other for so long to where, look, I don't like talking about this because I feel like we lose subscribers every time we say something about Dawn. But when Ash, Dawn, and Brock all say bye to each other, so I feel like you and I were kind of in the same boat of like, oh, bye, Dawn. This was kind of confusing, but we'll miss you. But when Ash and Brock say goodbye to each other at that point, it's it's hard. And this is the second time this has happened. You'd think we'd be used to it. But no, Ash and Brock just saying goodbye again and just hurting all of us. Yeah, that, God. The, yeah it seems like Brock's goodbyes are always the most emotional because... Except for maybe the one bird in the Orange Islands. That just doesn't feel quite the same. But there's goodbye at the end of Johto. Goodbye at the end of uh, Sinnoh, definitely. 
feel the, you feel it. Yeah. Hey, I remember a while ago I was rewatching the Wallace Cup for some video where some studs talked about what they would do for a Wallace Cup video, for a Wallace Cup sequel. And I remember, May, I don't know why I found this so funny, but when they have to team up with each other, May and Dawn are like, hey, Dawn, want to team up with me? Yeah, sure. And then at, Brock looks at Ash and they smile and Brock says, I guess you and me are teaming up, big guy. And I don't know <laughs> why, but I was laughing for about two or three minutes. I'm like, that is so wholesome. Um, it, you could tell they don't mean any ill will by each other, even if they don't know always know how to talk to each other. I don't know. Ash and Brock just don't get the they don't get the spotlight they deserve in terms of friendships because whenever people see ash interacting with somebody it's just one of the girls and then people go crazy about it yeah i could legit see like if we ever if we ever come back uh to them that ash and brock have ended up becoming uh like tag battle partners or something and are like champions of the world and did it in like their first time trying because that they get along so well, and I feel like that they could support each other. And Brock always seems to be able to adapt to Ash's really random strategies. Yeah, yeah, but he also kind of finds a way to hold him back because there are gym battles where the people, where all the other friends will be like, "Oh man, Ash is doing really well. That's great." But Brock will be like, "Yeah, he's doing well, but hold on, but hold on." Like Brock finds a way of reeling Ash back when he has to, and you, you need a friend like that. Exactly. As I said, I this was on my list as a possible backup if we had duplicates, and I really enjoyed this friendship as well. Yeah. Of course, Ash, Misty, and Brock are fantastic, but I wanted to say Ash and Brock in particular because they just don't get the love up, in my opinion. Yeah, I I always feel like that probably had the best dynamic with between all the characters was the original three. The others, there are some good dynamics within. Like I like. Um, Ash and May and May and Brock have some good moments and May and Max, but I don't really feel like Max and Brock interact that much from what I remember. Honestly, this might be a few times. Through my rewatch, Max does kind of look up to Brock in some cases, minus the whole flirting with girls thing, but they're all, they have subtle moments where Max really does look up to Brock, and let, but they're subtle, so you don't always notice them. Okay, I, I, yeah, I may need to go back and watch, but that's another thing for... that's. Yeah, oh, we're, we're oh, we're gonna have to talk about the advanced crew in another in another video, but I have to we have to hold off on that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I said because I, I really enjoyed your list. I think. Yeah. Like what? Likewise, I, I I like that I like that our lists are getting somewhat more ridiculous because I couldn't. I, I'm gonna be honest. I had a hard time giving out Griffin and guts. Yeah, they they have the most beautiful friendship until the end. Yeah, yeah, where Griffith wins, and the story has a happy ending. So, it works out, in a sense. Well, wasn't the whole goal for Guts at that point to get Griffith as much power as he needed? So I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but, pe but people are deniers. Or <laughs> people are in denial. But, but before you guys decide to burn our channel to the ground, let us know, what are some of your favorite friendships in the anime? Hey, it doesn't necessarily have to be the most complicated. It doesn't even have to be two good people. You can be two bad people, a good person and a bad person, just anything. Uh, multiple people. I, just any type of friendship that you feel like you can enjoy. Exactly. And, I mean, do you have a friendship that you feel would make an interesting anime version? And talk about it in the comments, I guess. Sure, sure why not? Uh, and please like, comment, and subscribe because we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And once we hit that, I actually don't know what we're going to do. Frankly, I didn't think we'd get this far. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked. <laughs> yeah, but, but do all of that nonsense and we will see you next time. This has been Alex. And Richard. And you have been listening to Anime Egotists. Good night. Peace easy.